in here, and uh, we have some, we're having some considerable difficulties. She's scared of all these cameras, so uh, it's her position right now that she does not want to uh, be her her face to be excuse me to be seen on the uh, cameras. Uh, she's concerned about her life. She just got a few threatening uh, telephone calls saying that they're going to uh, kill her, and uh, she's concerned about that. So she does not want her face to be seen, and she doesn't want to make a statement. Now, she still is on her story, saying that she is uh, recanting the uh, entire incident, saying that uh, it did not happen and that it was a full fabrication, but she's scared. And that's where we are right now. Uh, we had to coax her to come back here. And she's scared. She does not want her face to be seen on camera. She's, she's concerned about her life now. And uh, the, the person that is uh, her caregiver right now is willing to speak. If you allow her to do that, I don't know if you want her to do that or not. But right now she is uh, uh, concerned about her safety and does not want to appear in front of the cameras. Who are the threats from? There's some people calling anonymous calls over the telephone talking about uh, she thinks there's people from uh, West Virginia. She doesn't know who exactly they are, but uh, she thinks they know the individuals that are incarcerated as a result of that, and she's concerned about her safety. Why Did she tell you? I don't know. Well, I think they ran a story in, the, uh, uh, in West Virginia. The Charleston uh, news station ran a story last night, and it's been in the uh, Charleston Gazette. This morning, and uh, I have a copy of that article, and uh, it has uh, evidently raised a lot of attention. I think there was a bunch of tension in the area because this was a racial issue, and there were a lot of people that were upset about this, and uh, this had national attention, and they were concerned, and they were, and now they're threatening her. Uh, she's so why, had calls. Why is she coming forward? The reason why she's coming forward now is because she wants to right the wrong that was uh, perpetrated on these six individuals. The, she just wants to turn her life around. She's trying to, uh, she can't continue to live this life. This is what she told, tells me. But what? can you explain all the evidence, though, that the prosecution and the state had to put these guys away? Because they're not backing down. I understand. Uh, I didn't do the uh, criminal defense in the case. I don't know what the evidence is, so I can't tell you how we dispute any evidence. What I have been told is that she self-inflicted the injuries, the stab wounds, the other injuries that she sustained. The only thing that was uh, not self-inflicted was the bruises on her face and that she got in, in a fight with her, the guy that she was seeing in this incident, that one of the individuals, and that he... Uh, assaulted her. He beat her up. But that was prior to this event. Why, aside from being tor uh, tortured and that did not happen, if she's saying that did not happen, why was race brought into the um, why was race brought into the case in the first place? When you have a uh, alleged victim that is black and you have six individuals that are white, that's, because, that's why race was brought to this issue. Now, I don't know the facts, whether they brought it up or who brought race up in this issue, but it definitely was raised. Well, certainly she has said that they used racial slurs while they stabbed her. Well, then, then that's your answer to your question. She, the former prosecutor says that she called him three months ago concerned about these um, alleged... Why three months ago was she concerned about the attackers and now she's saying they didn't even attack her? To be First of all, I don't have any uh, evidence or proof that she called the prosecutor and was concerned about that. This is the first I've ever heard about that. But of course, if these situations were true, and that she's saying that she fabricated these stories, wouldn't you be concerned about the individuals that were released? Well, that seems you. logical to me. Who told you that stab wounds were self-inflicted? She, she told me that stab wounds were self-inflicted. Why she lied about the story? She wanted to get back at her boyfriend. She was mad at him for beating her up. Is she mentally competent to talk of this? To I'm a jurist doctor. I am not a medical doctor nor a psychiatrist. She has not been adjudicated to be incompetent by any tribunal that I know of. And based on my evaluation and talking to her, she seems competent to me. So are you saying one of the, one of the men who, uh, who now sits in 
jail. Was one of those guys her boyfriend? Yes. Brewster? Brewster. Bobby Brewster. They were having a relationship. What are the threats? If she's coming saying, oh, nobody did anything, it was just me, what threats are being made? They're going to kill her. For what? What did you think? What would you think? think let's think through this. Be logical about but this. She's getting threats. Think, think, be logical she's about it. threats that with the day before she's going to come through and say, I made it up, they're innocent. Okay. that being pressured into this? Or? No, she's not being pressured into this, but think why they would threaten her. If somebody lied against you or one of your family members, and they have served time in the penitentiary, don't you think you would be upset or they would be upset? I think it's odd she would get threats, anonymous calls, and the next day hold a news conference to say she made the whole thing up. I think that's odd. Good. Well, that's not the case. And she has been trying to uh, get someone to listen to her for a long period of time. The only reason it seems that she got someone to listen to her is when she hired a lawyer. That's the only time. Did she lie to her mother, too? Her mother? I don't know what she told her mother. Her mother is deceased now, so uh, I don't know if we can uh, resurrect that problem. That was her adopted mother. And that was her right, adopted right. mother. Is it true that um, Carmen helped uh, push her along in some of the stuff that she had said that was untrue in the past? I think uh, that they had some involvement in this. I'm not sure. You know, this person's not here to de defend themselves, so I can't make that statement. All I'm telling you is, is what the statement my client has told me that she is, one, scared to come out here because she does not want her face to be seen because she's fearful for her life. Second thing is, is that she is recanting her entire story. She is saying that this did not happen and she fabricated it. If, if you say the prosecution has the evidence, I have no involvement on that criminal prosecution. Uh, I don't think they went to trial with this case. I think everything was pled. And they all serve, are serving sentences on a plea, not a trial that went to a jury and the testimony was uh, called and they rendered a verdict. They did not do that. So. Is she, she going to face jail time or anything for wasting money and lying to police? I'm not the prosecutor. I think there is some potential consequences with respect to this if they believe her and they, they prosecute. They have a right to prosecute. They have sole discretion of when they're going to prosecute and when they're not. So will you defend her if it gets that far? My license is only good in uh, the state of Ohio. Ohio has no jurisdiction over this matter. Uh, the matter would have to be brought in uh, Logan County. So she's recanting her story. What about all the monetary donations and gifts she got from people? Does she plan to give those back? Ironically, she never received any of those monies. The funds were uh, used by her uh, adopted mother. Byron, is she indicating any kind of remorse? Total remorse. That's why she's coming forward. She is remorseful for having these people spend time in jail, and they didn't commit the acts that uh, they were accused of committing. Does she want to see them released? Yes, for sure. That's why she wants to come forward with it. Even though these are the people that are now threatening her? Who said that they were the people that were threatening her? I didn't say that. You're in, that's an inference on your behalf. So it would be incorrect. I didn't, you're still in, inferring things from things that can't pin me down. That's what I do for a living. <laughs> 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 Got to be better involved? than that. Obviously, she was trying to get back at her boyfriend. What about the other people involved? Well, you know how uh, you get in the dominoes when you're around and you, you get uh, caught up because you were part of this situation, but the main person that she was trying to uh, get back at her or be vindictive towards was Bobby. Before she had said that she had been raped, was she? did she have consensual sex with Bobby Brewster, though? Uh, she was having a relationship with him, yes. Um, this has certainly put a black eye in West Virginia as far as race relations, well, damage to the race relations in West Virginia. Irreparable damage? I don't think it's irreparable, but you know, we have some race issues that we need to address anyway. Now, whether or not this case has made us take a step backwards, I don't know.